Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and today we're going to be helping some of you Guardians as you make your way into the Crucible inside of the Destiny 2 beta this weekend. Whether you're a returning Guardian or a Guardian making their way into the Destiny experience for the very first time, we're going to go over some very basic and important concepts to help you perform better in both the Quick Play and Competitive Playlist. Let's start by talking about Active Radar. Active Radar is at the heart of the Destiny multiplayer experience. That's that little radar up in the top left corner of your screen. It uses a red marker system to identify the direction of incoming enemies and enemy locations. As you get closer, more of that red will fill up your actual radar and you'll be able to identify multiple targets. This is very important for making callouts, to figure out whether or not an enemy is pushing you or how many enemies you might be looking to engage as you push them. Active Radar is just a part of the Destiny experience. It's very important that you embrace it, make use of it, and better understand how to micromanage it across the other things you'll have to be doing in order to see success in Destiny 2 PvP. Now it's important to note that ADSing with any of the weapons in the beta right now also removes your ability to see your active radar. So if you're checking a firing line and trying to get a beat on a target, be aware that you no longer have your active radar to let you know if an enemy is flanking. You'll have to rely on sound cues and team callouts at that point. The next biggest part of any multiplayer first-person shooter experience is, of course, the weapons. Destiny 2 has a huge variety of weapons this time around, especially in our primary slots. We'll be looking at things like pulse rifles, auto rifles, semi-automatic scout rifles with modifications that make them full auto, hand cannons, and even SMGs now. There's so much going on with those first two slots before we even get into the power weapons, and it's very important to experiment with these weapons, find not just what works best for you, but also what works best in different engagements. Scouts and pulse rifles typically function better at range, although they can be used in close quarters via hipfire with a little bit less accuracy and precision. SMGs are good in extreme close quarter situations and really only after the shield of your enemy has been removed. Not all of the weapons within an archetype are created equally. And remember that you can also go in and tweak the performance of each weapon by modifying the perks. Some weapons will allow you to make a boost for range at the cost of stability, and vice versa. Definitely something you want to experiment with. If you find a weapon that just works right for you, you can also go ahead and fine-tune it to your personal Crucible experience. Now, when it comes to Destiny, precision shots are everything. This is just sort of in the Bungie DNA when it comes to making games. It was this way in Halo, it was this way in Destiny 1, it remains to be this way in Destiny 2. Headshots are going to let you tear down the shields, and shred the health bars of your enemies fast. If you want to win quick, and if you want to win more gunfights, you're going to want to land headshots. Getting comfortable with precision shots, figuring out how the different weapons, the scouts and the pulse rifles and the hand cannons all perform when trying to land consistent headshots is very important to being the best possible gunfighter you can be in Destiny 2 PvP. Now when it comes to gunfights, strafing is more important than it's ever been. This is like old school Halo stuff. Strafe to kill as I say. Strafing is moving from side to side. Your base movement speed while strafing is actually really quick in Destiny 2. So moving left to right while stopping just momentarily to engage a target, similar to the way you would do in Counter-Strike, is going to allow you to be accurate with your gunfire and also make yourself the hardest targets to hit in gunfights, especially in 1v1s. It's really important to get away from the pushing straight into an enemy while you're engaging them or even walking straight backwards. It's still something I'm working on because it's not something we were used to in Destiny 1 and it's just a big part of the game now. I mean, a lot of people, especially those of you who are going to be making your way into the beta for the very first time this weekend, are going to struggle to hit a strafing target. So making yourself a harder target to hit is going to be a really important thing in, again, winning those gunfights. Now, the two game modes we have available in Destiny 2, both Control and Quick Play and Countdown and Ranked, are all about team play. We've got 4v4 matches going on here. There's not a whole bunch of chaos. There's not players all over the map. Communicating with your team, if possible, is very important, but even in solo queue, the value of just moving with a teammate as they push from one objective to the next can really change the tide of battle. Team fights are definitely important here. Team shotting one target as you push in to capture the heavy. Working as a team is just important. There's nothing cheap about team shotting. It's the way that first-person shooter has been played for centuries. This isn't Call of Duty. It's not about mowing down three guys in front of you. It's about each kill being very high value. So if you and your team want to push the guy at heavy on the enemy team, you need to do it together. Two people go in. If they've got two people, then you got a 2v2. If they got one person, well, there you go. You just clean that guy up with your teammate. Even if one of you dies, 
you've now captured their heavy. Team play is key, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Destiny 2 Crucible experience as it exists in the beta. Accept it, get comfortable with it, and you'll see much more success. Let's talk a little bit about control. There's only really one big thing we need to talk about here, and that is the fact that the point doesn't cap any faster with more people. Let one person cap the point while you defend or even move on to capture another point. If there are four people, two people, three people all standing out of control point, and someone shows up with their super, you're just going to get shut down and destroyed. One person. That's all you need. Cap does not go quicker with multiple targets anymore. It's very important to recognize that and use that in your decision making as you push to control all of the control points on the map. Now when it comes to countdown, it's again very important to stress that this is a game mode best played with a squad willing to communicate their strategy and their tactics, proper callouts, decision making, looking at what the enemy team is doing on a round to round basis and trying to counter that, making sure you're unpredictable is very important in countdown. If you keep pushing left to try and plant the bomb, round after round after round, the enemy is just going to send their whole team there. Break it up, split off targets, maybe even send one person to poke or scout at a different location, and again, try to play countdown with a group of friends. I'm not going to push you away from solo queuing. I've solo queued countdown and had some pretty decent experiences, but just don't head into that game mode and expect to have a really great time with just a group of randoms. This is the type of mode where you want to call up your buddy and say, dude, we're doing countdown tonight. You win? Okay, I'll get Dave and Jerry. We got a squad. Let's make it happen. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Just a nice little introduction to help you get locked and loaded for the Destiny 2 beta this weekend. I hope you guys have a great time with it. Remember to experiment. Above all else, try out the different weapons. Try out the different combinations. Uh, you know, think about using multi-weapons on one target. You know, sometimes you want to engage with the scout. Switch to a pulse rifle to kind of get that medium range and that, that more heavy DPS. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in Destiny PvP. I'm really, really into it. I think it's an absurd amount of fun. Is it very different from Destiny 1? Yes. I think it's much more akin to old school 4v4 Slayer back in the days of Halo 2. I particularly like that. I think there's a lot to love here if you're looking for some really good team play focused PvP. Good luck out there, everyone. Any of you Guardians who have any questions, new or old, feel free to throw them down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember to play smart. Remember to play to challenge yourself, but most importantly, remember to play for fun.